This week from the Reef Hotel in the county of Mombasa on Kura 2022. We talked to the ODM Party Secretary General Edwin Sifuna on the forthcoming party primaries, the proposals by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, the forthcoming National Delegates Conventions of the Ruling Jubilee Party and the Orange Democratic Movement, and the future of his politics. Secretary General, thank you for making time on Kura 2022. Your time is appreciated. Thank you for having me. Let's begin with the forthcoming party nominations. And this time they come at a different level because of the Political Parties Amendment Bill, which is now an act after the President assented into law following the parliamentary approval. How is the Azimio camp and the Amrera led by the ODM party chief, Raila Odinga, planning to stave off discontent and grievances perhaps that may result as a result of the party nominations? Uh, first time, I don't speak for Azimio. I speak only for ODM. And as a party, I can tell you that uh, we are more than happy with the legislation that has uh, now been put in place because it helps us to solve a, p a few problems that we have had in the past with uh, party primaries. Uh, key among them is uh, the centrality of uh, register of members this time round because we have had the fiasco of uh, people who are not ordinarily members of ODM or any other political party coming to participate in the primaries of other political parties and influencing the outcome so that probably they end up with uh, a candidate they consider weaker uh, at the uh, you know, general election. So we are very happy that for the first time all political parties will be required to conduct primaries only using uh, the party register. At ODM, of course, we had uh, uh, come up with new rules uh, regarding our party primaries to be able to contend with some of the challenges that we have seen in the past. And uh, our National Executive Committee has actually approved four methods of nomination in ODM. Uh, the first amongst them is uh, consensus because we are in the handshake season and we believe it is possible for any two candidates, if given opportunity, or three or, or more candidates, if given opportunity to have a conversation amongst themselves uh, because they know themselves, they know the electoral areas that they are running, they could talk amongst <coughs> themselves and decide that Ahmed is probably a better candidate Ayub. this time, Ayub. Uh, is, is probably a better candidate this time round than Sifuna. And uh, this is something that we encourage and we will be able to provide facilities including data and science that can be able to uh, aid some of our aspirants in certain areas to be able to reach a consensus. Then there is the question of uh, uh, direct tickets which are backed by science and, and, and data okay. that in fact uh, the party will rely on uh, credible pollsters to tell us, uh, for instance in Nairobi, uh, the science could be telling you that uh, for the Senate seat in Nairobi, Sifuna is leading with 70 percentage points and the next person is at 6 percent. Mm -hmm. So it would uh, not make any sense to then subject Sifuna to a party primary where it is clear the data and the science is showing you that the gap is too big. And uh, if the data is showing you that uh, between Ayub and Sifuna the gap is maybe 5 plus minus 5 uh, percentage points, then you could make a case for another method of nomination which is uh, the delegate system or the universal suffrage by the registered members of the party. So four methods of nomination, uh, you cannot use any one method across the country. You know that there are certain regions like in the uh, pastoralist communities that consensus is actually very big and is, it is led by the elders in the communities. So you cannot, for instance, tell the elders in Isiolo that we don't recognize the consensus that you have had, that we want you to go to the debate. It will not make sense. Given that then, one thing that you can't run away from as a party is that uh, the party leader, your party leader, your party boss, the ODM party chief, Raila Odinga, is perhaps creating an umbrella of political parties that will fall under the Azimio camp. Then there is already sort of growing discontent and grievances raised by parties like, for example, the Democratic Action Party of Kenya, DAPK, which is now predominant in Western Kenya ever since its formation and association with Defence CS, Eugene Omalwa. Then you must have a plan, isn't it, to also address some of the issues that might arise as a result of some who might feel aggrieved as a result of the political parties' nominations? I think nominations. for us, uh, especially in Western Kenya, because ODM is an established political party in Western Kenya. Uh, ODM uh, in Western is a, is, a, is a very strong party. It is one of our strongholds, in fact, Western Kenya. And uh, I like that our DAP counterparts actually recognize that. And they know that if they were to engage in any exercise of joint nominations, the ODM candidates will always beat the DAP candidates. And the reason is simple, and uh, C.S. Wamalo alluded to it himself, that in fact ODM has had time 
to be able to register members. So if the law says that you only use registered members of the constituent political parties in a joint nomination at the coalition level, they don't have a register of members. This is just a fact. In uh, Bungoma, for instance, I have 90,000 registered members of ODM. And uh, DAP probably don't have 5,000 registered members. So if we say we are going to do <laughs> joint nominations, you can see already that there is no way the DAP candidate will win. So this is why we are saying that consensus is something that has to be uh, at the center of uh, uh, decision making when it comes to areas where, for instance, we have those uh, uh, coalition partners like, like DAPK. You are saying that they are, uh, uh, you know, predominant. I don't know which science you are using, are you? Because this is a party that has been registered less than three months ago. They have never been tested at an election. So what is this data that you are using to say that they are the predominant party? Okay, okay so it, it all depends on the traditional basis of how political parties are strong. No, it doesn't because ODM has performed very well in Bungoma. And even if you run your own polls, you will see that the most uh, popular party in Bungoma right now is ODM. We have done the science and we have the, we have the figures. Okay. Now, there is the aspect about the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IBC, proposing changes to the Elections Act, and yes. that is before Parliament. And uh, there are some who are concerned about uh, the transmission of the results, though the IEBC says that this is meant to be a complementary mechanism to seal the door that the Supreme Court has mentioned in its ruling in 2017 when you petitioned the court after the elections in 2017. And the likes of James Orengo and company, your party, the likes of Junette Mohammed, who are key staunch supporters of the ODM party leader, have come out and said that this is not going to be practical. Is that also the party's position regarding the IBC proposals? Yes, in fact, when uh, news broke of these uh, proposed amendments to the elections laws, there, there's people who jumped quickly to say this is a project of ODM. And uh, soon thereafter, the owners of the bill came out and it was the IBC. It is not ODM that proposed those changes because ODM as a party will never stand for any proposition that close back on the transparency that has been introduced in uh, our electoral system already. We are the people who successfully petitioned uh, the overturning of a presidential uh, election because there was lack of transparency and uh, failure to adhere to the very strict guidelines that have been uh, put forward in the law by the IBC. So it would be preposterous for us to be able to support any law that then appears to be able to uh, take us back to those uh, dark old days. We would prefer that in every polling station you have a setup such as the one that you have here with cameras rolling and the uh, you know, returning officer reading out the results live, showing it to your cameras so that everybody can be able to tally the results so that your guys at uh, your main studio uh, don't need to wait for the IABC to declare results, just like it happens in uh, places like the U.S. In the U.S., it is the networks that call the election because they have access to uh, raw data of the results that are being released and, and the exi exit polls. So we want the sort of transparency that we have in other democracies to be able to, uh, you know, be applied here in this country. And uh, the IABC is, 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 uh, cannot nitpick on what... what uh, uh, you know, reforms were proposed by the courts. You remember, after the uh, overturning of the elections in, by the Supreme Court, we had some irreducible minimums that we thought as uh, the NASA coalition then were critical before, uh, to be put in place before we went into the repeat election. They refused. Key amongst them was the firing of the people responsible for uh, the mess that we saw in 2017, including Chebukati himself. So, you know, I don't think that the people in the IABC can lead any meaningful reform of electoral laws to bring more transparency. Uh, and uh, they, they still have this skunk on their back that they have never even complied with the Supreme Court order okay. to open the servers. And then the idea is that when you read through the press statement by the IABC, the commission argues that this is meant to be complementary and that it was taken out of context, cited misrepresentation. No, 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 the, the, the text of the law is there. And it also cited the court ruling in 2017 of the 11,000 contested polling stations with the IABC said couldn't relay the result transmission because of poor network coverage. And the court said that it is inexcusable in 2017 when David Maraga led bench in the quashed the president's re-election on the 1st of September 2017. Therefore, you see no point in the IABC coming up no, uh, with know, this as we, part of sealing we, the we loopholes have, in the electoral memories. process. We have uh, memories of this system that uh, they are trying to propose here. Uh, you remember what happened in 2007 when we were fully reliant on uh, physical delivery of uh, results. Uh, it is possible for us as a, as a country and even as the Electoral Commission to put in place measures to be able to be uh, in a position to transmit results on the election day, just that election day alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are technological solutions to many of these things. 
and uh, it is for them to explore those solutions and be able to make sure that on the day of the elections, uh, you know, they were, they were told, for instance, for some of those uh, polling stations, we could very well procure satellite phones for them. Mm -hmm. Why not explore that instead of taking us back to this question of physical uh, delivery of results? So that is what raises questions because in this day and era, there are technological uh, alternatives to you uh, telling us that there is no 4G coverage in certain places. When the, the world has moved to 5G, surely. Talking about that, the Krigler Commission in the aftermath of the 2007-8 post-election violence did recommend some key recommendations where it said that uh, no actual recommendations of substance should be made to the electoral laws Absolutely. two years before the elections. Absolutely. Therefore, when the chevokati led Commission argues that this is meant to further embolden its handling or conduction of the elections in August, and then some elements, for example, say key players, stakeholders like you, the ODM party, and even the Jubilee party, that uh, is made up by some now who are associated with the United Democratic Alliance party of the deputy president, still have concerns and grievances. I, I think, Ayub, uh, the, the, the law as is now on transmission of results is sufficient. Uh, for as long as they are able to uh, comply with the law as it is right now, that uh, immediately the results are announced at the polling session, those results are final. You transmit the, uh, you know, the, the SMS figures together with an image of the uh, Form the 34. Form. Mm -hmm. I mean, that should be complete. They should, they, they, that should be sufficient. They have never explained to us, and they failed to explain to the Supreme Court to you know, satisfaction of the judges, why it was so difficult for them to comply to with that uh, basic uh, requirement, even in uh, places where there was no known you know, coverage by all the, all the, the, the telephone carriers. Okay. So what we are looking at is we need for the IEBC to be able to comply with the law. Nobody is asking them to do anything more. And if they had done so in 2017, including compliance with court orders, then we would not have uh, any problems. We want the IABC, it is their responsibility to win the confidence of uh, Kenyans in the electoral system. It is not for us as political players, because for us, we have been beaten twice, uh, more than once before, and they say once beaten, twice shy. So if we raise these concerns, it is out of abundance of caution, especially having gone through what we have gone through in 2017, 2013, and 2007. Okay, yeah. and then the commission unceremoniously ended up with only three commissioners of uh, the full commission. Yes. That was in the aftermath of the resignations by the vice chairperson Kony Mainankatha and uh, Dr. Paul Kurugat, Margaret Mwachanya, and Dr. Roslina Kombe, who fled days before the repeat poll on the 26th of October 2017. As a party, perhaps may I say this, the party that has been con constant within the political establishment ever since the 2005 referendum and the formation of the party ended up with the 2007 elections. Do you have confidence that the IABC can deliver this time round? Well, this is what we say, that uh, you can never rule out uh, mischief of human beings. And as I've told you, it has happened to us many times before. And we've been vindicated because uh, previously when we said uh, there was potential for mischief, People used to take it that uh, we are just so losers who cry at every uh, turn about an election that we had lost. But we were vindicated by the Supreme Court in 2017. You have seen people from, uh, uh, you know, the ruling party Jubilee themselves come out to say that in fact some of these things happen. And I as SG, in fact, have encouraged people to come out. Mm -hmm. Because if we have an open conversation about the things that we have been through as a nation, it provides a platform for us to be able to heal and to move forward. So it is not about uh, the confidence in the individuals. I as SG will say, I am confident in the law that is in our books right now. That in fact, if the IABC and all the commissioners were to adhere to that law, we would not have a problem. It was not nullified because we didn't have confidence in IABC. No, mm -hmm. it was nullified because of clear and distinct failures by the IABC to follow the law. Okay. And that's all, all we ask for. And perhaps the preservation of the independence of institutions in the country post the 2010, Absolutely. for they are important yeah. in the consolidation of our democracy. And let me ask you this in relation to it, because uh, the IABC's conduction of election is very important, but then there are claims of rigging, especially made by the UDA camp associated with the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto, that is Musale Mudabad, who spoke about a week ago in the county of Baringo. And then the statements by the Member of Parliament, Muranga County Woman MP, that is Sabina Shege, who said that Munajua Kule Central Nimeskia Wengine Wakisema Tuliwaibia, Kuna Kaukweli Kadogo, Lakini Kama Tulijua Kuiba, Sihata Hei Tutafanya Kwani Wanafikiria Wawe Ndio. I mean, she said, Ndio Wajanja Kutuliko. What's the ODM Party's statement or rather response to the remarks made by Sabina Shege? Sabina Shege is not uh, a member of ODM. I, I shouldn't have to speak for her. She has her own SG. But I have just told you now that, in fact, 
Uh, if you look at the history of a country like uh, South Africa, after the fall of apartheid, they put together a TJRC headed by the late Desmond Tutu to allow people to speak the truth about the things that they have done. I have told you that as ODM, we continue to be vindicated over certain things that we've been trying to tell you, especially in the media, and we have been painted as crybabies. Mm -hmm. You remember that ODM has, uh, for instance, fought a long time over this tag of, oh, we are a violent political party. When people like Mike Sonko come out and they say some of the things that have happened, we have actually stage managed violence and blamed it on ODM. You know, those are the conversations we want people to have. When you have people like Kreitu Murungi coming out to say the reason why it was difficult for Ella to get votes in central Kenya is because of all the uh, mud slinging and demonization and that we are taking it upon ourselves to be able to do what? To wash the mud that we threw at this gentleman. That is the sort of a conversation that actually when people come out and own, you should not condemn them. You should be able to encourage them and create an environment for them to tell us more. Even the, con uh, the, the, the speech by or the, the statements by Sabina must be seen in that context because Sabina Chege is not the first person is not the first person to allege that rig rigging actually happens in, uh, in our elections. And as I've told you we have caught them once with the cookie in the jar in the Supreme Court, okay. the highest court in the land, for the first time in the continent of Africa, throwing out a presidential election. Okay, okay. Yeah. They then for a party that are champion for democracy, liberalization, and yeah. uh, social progress, then yeah. what does it paint of the party when you have the likes of senior councils, James Orengo and Otiende Amolo, who are the first line of defense of your party boss, Raila Odinga, appear to be representing her. Yes, she has a constitutional right to be represented against such allegations when she appeared before the IEBC, but what does it send out? What signal does it send out? Orengo was not there on behalf of ODM. We did not send him. We did not send him as a party. He is an, a world-renowned lawyer, and as you've said it yourself, uh, every person who's accused of facing any uh, legal challenges is free to pick the lawyer of their choice. We did not tell Sabina that these are the lawyers you will pick, no. She picked uh, the lawyers that she desires to be able to put the best case forward for her. Okay. But as I have told you, first of all, I don't even understand the mandate of uh, the IBC uh, Enforcement Committee uh, when we haven't gotten into an election where we are all signing uh, the Code of Conduct. Mm -hmm. So those are questions that the IBC have to grapple with. But what I am saying is this. First as ODM, we are victims of electoral manipulation. We have caught people in the jar before, as recently as 2017. We would never countenance anybody alleging or claiming or planning uh, to subvert the will of the people. We are the party that will always protect the will of the people. But I am saying because we have a history in this country, Sabina is not the first person to raise the specter of electoral rigging. Okay. And it has happened and they've been caught. That's what I'm saying. We should encourage people to come out and tell us how it was done, for instance. And it will help us maybe prevent uh, future election rigging. Okay, so the ODM party position is that you have been vindicated. We have been vindicated. Okay. And when we get back from the break on Kura 2022, we continue our sit-down with the ODM party secretary general, Edwin Sifuna. And this is coming to you from the port city of Mombasa. Stay tuned.